The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Our Advent journey is now complete. The darkness is gone. The light of the world is here. Our hope has been met. Our preparations are done. Our joy has been made perfect. The love of God has come to live among us. And so today we light the candle of Christ. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. The long-awaited Christ has come. Celebrating the birth of our Savior, we light this candle. Together we will shine with the radiant light of Christ. Hello, I'm Pastor Cheryl. Welcome to worship at Lindale Lutheran Church on this most holy of nights, the night we celebrate the birth of our Savior. A few announcements. Now is the time, if you are worshiping at home, to find a candle and lighter or a flashlight for each person who is gathering, or use your cell phones, maybe even with a candlelight app, or just be ready to close your eyes to imagine or remember a candlelit worship space. If you are worshiping with us at 3.30 and are local, you are invited to a drive-in bonfire, candlelight, and Holy Communion service in our Lindale parking lot tonight at 7 o'clock. And wherever you are, please join us for our 10.30 p.m. 
digital Christmas Eve service, a service of poetry, song, and story. Christmas is a story of love. It is a story of God's amazing grace. For hundreds of years, love whispered, I am coming. I am coming to be with you, to stay with you forever. It was love celebrated that night in the skies over Bethlehem with angels and music and shouts of praise. Love was the shining star high in the sky sent to draw all people, people from near and far away to come and worship the baby. Christmas is a story of love. Through God's amazing grace, love has come to us, come to dwell with us, Emmanuel, God with us, Love has brightened our eyes. Christmas is a story of love. God's love that comes to each of you this night. Love that comes to you each and every day. Let us rejoice. We sing our gathering hymn. We gather as we live in the name of God, the Creator, in the name of Jesus, the Babe in the Manger, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we worship this night, may you grow still enough to hear the beating of your own heart, your own heart's deepest 
longings. May you free yourself from thoughts of what's left to do or what's not going to get done and of everything is different this year. As we worship, may you grow calm, grounded by the love of God, grounded deep within. Now is the time. Let us be still. May we hear the voice of God this night. Let us pray. You come, O God, unprotected into our dangerous world, a world filled with hatred and fear, and you offer yourself as our peace. Let our joy be to seek your peace. Let our hope be to foster your peace. Let our purpose be to live your peace, that we may proclaim with all the joy of the angels and all the courage of the shepherds, that we may proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth God's peace. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Medion. For all of the boots of the trampling warriors and all of the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello to all the children, God's children of all ages. Whenever we worship together in person at Lindale Lutheran Church, part of our time together is called children's time. And any of God's children who want to come up and we spend some time together. We hear a story and we pray. Right now, because of COVID, we can't be close together in our worship space. But I hope you've been able to find kids time with Pastor Cheryl on YouTube, YouTube or Facebook. If you haven't, you still can. There are lots of stories and lots of songs with Chuck and Sherry. Ask, us, ask a special adult to help you find it. On Kids Time, we've been talking about getting ready for Christmas, about waiting, about the time of the color blue, the time called Advent. And part of our getting ready at Lindale is always about filling our stable, about creating our creche, getting it ready, each Sunday, remember, you would help me put another piece in place in the stable, in the barn. We put the cow in first, maybe because that barn was probably the cow's home. And maybe a sheep or two lived in that stable as well. And the manger, of course, the feed box for the cow is there too. And then when we get closer to Christmas, when it's almost time for Jesus to be born, who gets to the stable? Yes, Mary. Mary, 
gets to the stable, Mary and Joseph. Mary is tired and excited and a little scared because soon she will have a baby. And Joseph, he is also at the stable. And he's glad they've found somewhere to stay, even if it's a barn. And he's tired and he's excited and he's kind of scared too because soon he will be a dad. And we have the donkey. Mary rode that donkey because it can be hard to walk a long ways when you're going to have a baby. Of course, she also walked because it can be really hard to ride a donkey when you're going to have a baby. So the donkey's in that stable. And here's an angel. This one angel can remind us that there was a sky full of angels the night Jesus was born. I think this angel is getting ready to sing. It says Gloria on her sash. And who did the angels tell first? The shepherds. And here is a shepherd getting close to the stable. And now, tonight, it is Christmas. No more waiting, no more getting ready. Look around, not so much blue in our church now. There's lots of white and gold and the big white candle in the middle of our advent wreath is lit. The Christ candle, the Jesus candle, the one that gets lit on all the really special Sundays. When we light it tonight because ready or not, Jesus is born because of God's amazing grace, the baby is in the manger. Grace in a manger. Now some of you watching probably remember that usually the baby isn't in the manger and we all go looking for the baby Jesus at our Christmas Eve service and we talk to lots of people along the way and we help some of them and when we get back we are surprised by the baby in the manger. And that reminds us that we don't know exactly how Jesus gets here, even though he know he will. And that's the mystery of Christmas, because Jesus is always with us all the time. This year, you got to see me put baby Jesus into the manger. So that isn't really a surprise, but sometimes, and maybe especially at a time when we can't be with all our families and friends because of the coronavirus, maybe we just need to know, to know Jesus is in that manger, to see and to believe that always Jesus comes. Even when we can't see him, even when it sometimes seems like we can't even feel him, God has promised that always Jesus is with us, loving us and forgiving us no matter what. No wonder the angel said, do not be afraid. Jesus is with us. Let's pray about that. Dear God, thank you for coming as a baby. Thank you for Jesus. Help us to know that you are always with us. Thank you for Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a stable with baby Jesus in your house, go and carefully touch baby Jesus with just one finger. Feel that baby so that you can remember that when we try and if we notice, we can feel Jesus with us. We can feel Jesus with our hearts. Let's sing about Jesus in the manger. Lay down his sweet head The 
stars in the sky look down where he lay the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay look at a line loading the poor No crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from the babe in the manger, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book, Christmas is Jesus, Ken Bible writes, and Christmas is the story of a promise. For hundreds of years, God had been making promises to the people. God promised a prince, a shepherd, a healer, a conqueror, a prophet, a priest, a lion, a lamb. God promised peace, God promised love and life without end. And finally, one evening in the blackness of midnight, the promises all came wrapped together as one amazing promise. And the promise was a baby, end quote. The promise was Emmanuel, God with us. The promise was God, God's own self. God knew that only God's son would be enough. We had God's law. God's law given in love to help us be all we were created to be. The law is right, but the law can't change you. The law can demand, but it can't give. The law can't save. We'd like the law to save. It seems easier somehow that way. We learn the rules, learn exactly what we need to do, and then somehow we do it, and we're saved. And if we're getting it at least sort of right, we are surely less of a sinner and more saved than that person across the street or across the country or across the ocean or across the aisle. But if learning the rules were enough and trying to follow them would do, then we wouldn't be here tonight. But we can't ever get it right. And so we come longing for light in our darkness. And God doesn't leave us in the darkness of our sin. And God doesn't wait for us to be ready or for the world to be ready. As our children reminded us in last Sunday's annual Christmas program, ready or not, God is coming. The shepherds stand at the manger, not as converted sinners, but simply because they are drawn to the manger just as they are. They weren't ready, but they didn't wait. And God didn't wait. I love this poem, First Coming, by Madeline Lengel. God did not wait till the world was ready, till nations were at peace. God came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime. God turned water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, God came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt 
to a world like ours of anguish, shame, God came, and God's light would not go out. God came to a world that did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn, in the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, touch our pain, God came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. This is the night God came, the night God comes. God comes again and again, God comes. God comes right into your joy and celebration, into the smiles of your children and grandchildren, into the tearing of the wrapping paper and the raising of glasses. God comes. Some of you are thinking about chores and food that is waiting and about the gifts that need unwrapping or still need wrapping, though you didn't hear that from me. Some of you will celebrate Christmas this year with someone special for the very first time ever and others of you will spend the day remembering those who for the first time ever are not here to celebrate with you. Many of us will celebrate in different ways and likely with fewer loved ones because we all live with the reality of that coronavirus. It's like the hymn writer predicted, the hopes and fears of all the years are truly met in us tonight. And into the middle of all our concerns and commitments, all our joys and disappointments, our worries and our pain, into the middle of it all comes again the birth of Jesus, the story of the moment when God decides that each and every one of us, from the meekest to the mightiest, would all have power. In Jesus there is power, power enough to feed the hungry of the world, both those who long for food and those who hunger for truth and justice. In Jesus, there is power enough to house the homeless, those without actual shelter, as well as those who might have a roof over their heads, but lack a sense of safety or belonging, even inside their own homes. In Jesus, there is power enough to clothe the naked, love the lonely, comfort the despairing, welcome the stranger, and heal the broken. In Jesus there is power, the power of his presence to hold and comfort those of you who are alone right now, literally alone because of distancing, because of a work or life situation, and those of you alone, even if you are gathered with others, because for the first time that most precious loved one is no longer living on this earth. And so we pray, come Emmanuel, bind up our broken hearts and our broken world. Come, Lord Jesus, and comfort all who mourn. Come to the unemployed and the underemployed. Come to those who barely get by, surviving only until the unexpected happens. Come to the lost and the lonely. Come to the hungry, the homeless, the hurting. And he did. Jesus came down. He came down that we might have love and hope and joy and peace. Here is God's future in a tiny package a little bit of Christmas. Our culture seeks a beautiful big Christmas, and yet, especially this year, many of us struggle to manage even a little Christmas. It reminds me of a story I read a number of years ago. It so captured my imagination that I never forgot it. Perhaps you've heard it. The story has since shown up on numerous blogs, and I suspect in more than one sermons. sermon. It tells us that all we need perhaps most especially in this year of our Lord, 2020, is a mustard seed Christmas. In the meditation as I remember, Charlene described the first Christmas after her mother died, died way too young from a horrible disease. As Christmas drew near, Charlene couldn't even imagine taking part in any kind of a celebration. She couldn't bear the thought of pretending to feel joy. Hope seemed completely foreign. Her husband reminded her of the mustard seed, the tiniest of seeds that grows into a mighty bush. Her husband reminded her that God works in a mustard seed sort of way, that God can take a tiny seed of faith and grow it into a kingdom of hope. 
Somehow, her husband's words spoke straight to Charlene's heart. She immediately went into her kitchen, dug around in her spice cabinet, and found a jar of mustard seeds. She took one seed out and taped it to a piece of white paper and put it up on the mantel of the fireplace of their living room. The mustard seed, that mustard seed, was her family's first Christmas decoration that year. It was a mustard seed that allowed Charlene to live Christmas to live Christmas, to sustain hope. God does work in a quiet mustard seed kind of way. In fact, Jesus would later declare that the very kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. God grows God's kingdom from tiny, humble beginnings. The choir of angels is heard by just a few shepherds. Only God could achieve such incredible perfection through absolute simplicity a baby boy, child of Mary, in the very small village of Bethlehem. I like the way Reverend Kretzman says it. When God acts to save the world, God touches human hearts with the gentle might of God's mercy, with the love of God cradled in a manger, with the wonder of tiny lips that once called to Adam in the garden, with the mystery of small hands that once set the stars in the heaven, God applies no power but the power of God's love, and there is no greater force than that in earth or sea or sky, in him whom the manger held and the universe cannot contain. Maybe what will sustain us this year and what is needed always is indeed a mustard seed Christmas. Maybe that tiny scrap of humanity, that ray of light from the manger, is all that is needed. Maybe this mustard seed sustains us because the promises of God, of God's incredible, amazing, everlasting kingdom is wrapped up in faith and hope the size of a mustard seed. Mustard seed in that child of Mary, a baby in a stable in Bethlehem. May yours be a mustard seed Christmas. Joy to the world. Amen.
Rejoicing in the light of Christ that shines upon us, we pray for the church, the world, and all according to their needs. God of love and compassion, we pray for innkeepers and travelers, for those who are cold or hungry, sick or alone this night. We remember those for whom Christmas will be difficult. Shower your love upon all who struggle to find or share happiness this Christmas time. Comfort those separated from the ones they love, separated by work or by distance, and especially by death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder and imagination, we pray for the earth, your beloved creation, and our home. Guard and preserve rivers and woods, mountains and valleys, marshes and oceans, towns and cities. Care for shepherds and ranchers and all who tend your animals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light and hope, God of stars and surprises, open our eyes to your glory and our hearts to your presence. As we share the amazing mystery of your birth among us, fill us with peace, the peace that only you can give. Help us live as your children, willing to share our love for you and willing to listen to the faith of others, that all your people may be one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of forever, we pray for ourselves. We pray for those we love and for those we are struggling to love. And we give thanks for the blessings of Christmas. Open our hearts to your presence Transform us by the depths of your love poured out at Bethlehem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the hopes and prayers of our hearts on this holy night, O God, and magnify our joy at the birth of your light among us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The angels declared, Glory to God in the highest and peace to all people on earth. May the peace of God be with you always. Please take a moment to share the peace with those around you. If you are alone this night, give yourself a hug. Trust that always God is with you. Feel your brothers and sisters reaching out to hold you and share the peace of the babe in the manger. We worship with our offering. You are invited to give electronically using our website or our Facebook page. Mailing or dropping off your gift is also always a good option. Our address is available on our website, lindalelutheranchurch.com. Thank you for loving and serving your neighbor. It was cold and Mary and Joseph were fearful, but that did not stop the birth. They were poor and had no place fitting for their child but that did not stop the birth. They were uncertain about what God wanted from them, but that did not stop the birth. Today, we are still sometimes cold. We are often fearful. We are all at some time financially, physically, relationally, or spiritually poor, but these things did not stop the birth of Jesus then, nor will they stop God now. Like Mary and Joseph, who trusted in your grace, O God, we offer ourselves and our gifts to you. Bless these gifts, bless our lives, our thoughts, and our actions, that Christ may be revealed through us to the world that is yet in darkness. Amen.
and now we share the gift of light as God shared the gifts of hope and peace and joy and love. God's gift of light wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger one silent and holy night. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing our sending hymn.
light shines in the darkness and the darkness shall not overcome it go now with the light of christ go now and through god's amazing grace bring light to the darkness of our world go now glorifying and praising god for all that you have heard and seen this night thanks be to god <laughs> 